Okay. So um, we're going to talk about no matter where you are um, in this journey, you're on this call because you want to rank up. And so for most of us, um, you are either trying to go gold or I'm sorry, you're trying to go silver or you have attained silver and you're trying to go gold. And so more, probably more than, than typical for me, you're going to see me referring to my notes because I, I want to be intentional about this call and I want to make sure that I'm giving you um, good information and good practical steps for moving forward. And so it's the end of the month. And so typically at the end of the month, you hear a lot of chatter about ranking up. And so, especially on this team right now, we have a hand, five, six, seven people who are really pushing for going silver or gold or senior gold. And um, that's kind of like a natural progression in this business. But really, ultimately, we want for you to for sure go silver. And so I'm just kind of looking around this page and it looks like most of us are, but it's going silver is bigger than simply going silver. Um, and so I want to talk to you about retention and, and retaining, retaining those people and kind of what you need once you retain those people to be able to move, to progress and to go forward and to move into gold. And so here's something that um, if you've been on, on any of these calls, and most of you have been on quite a few, that you'll hear me say a lot and I talk about all the time, and that's because it's so important, and that is belief. Um, so we can get you silver. Silver means you are locking arms with your best friend, your sister, your mom, your cousin. You, that's your inner circle. These are people that trust you. And you don't have to have a ton of um, knowledge or you really don't have to have that to go silver because you're really locking arms. And that's how I went silver. I said to my very closest um, friends, do this with me. I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm learning, but I want to get healthy and I've done, you know, some preliminary investigation and it looks like this might really be something good for us. Let's do it together. Um, it's more fun to do it you know, together to get healthy together. We'll have accountability partners and it'll be great. And so going silver is kind of that process, reaching out to your inner circle, people who already trust you and you don't have to sell them anything. And by the way, let me just add that we're not selling anybody anything. Um, but, and we can help you get there. So if you want to go silver, um, we want to get to help you go silver. Honestly, the more I talk about it and the more I think about it, it really is just, it's mean to have this and not share it with the people that we care about and that we love. And so we can share, we can share the, the very simple practical steps for, for locking arms with your inner circle and, and, and getting your products covered and going silver. And that's the very first rank in Plexus and that's three qualified ambassadors um, there's a very nice bonus. And in February, lots of our, um, our friends on this team are working hard and we have two days left. We have 48 hours left. So that's a lot of time. Um, and so in February, there's a, a nice double bonus. And, um, so typically the bonus is a hundred dollars, but in February you get $150 for gold and silver. And then you get that second $50, which is the other, um, quarter, I guess, of your double bonus in March when your team stays qualified. And qualified just means that uh, you are ordering your products because you want to be a product of these products. Um, and, and also potentially you are sharing the products with your dad and maybe your dad is going to buy pink drink from you. So you're maybe adding a small customer base and the, the very minimum for qualification is 100 in PV. Okay, so we're gonna get you silver. But I really want to focus on kind of moving beyond that because once you go silver, once you do lock arms with your, um, you know, inner circle and you're, and you're trying to get healthy together and you have an accountability partner, we want you to take the, um, the initiative and go gold. And, and most of you will want to just, you know, you put one foot in front of the other and what's next. And so next is gold and gold is something, um, that equates to um, really making an impact in your um, in your community for for health and wellness, 
and also um, for, for financially, um, you'll really start to see a difference. I think the average for a silver ambassador is about $422 a month and the average for a gold ambassador is closer to $1,000 a month. And that's real, that's really um, impactful money. That's a mortgage, that's a car payment and, you know, and then some. And so there are very specific steps and intentional steps that you will need to, to take in order to go gold. And I want to focus mostly on that tonight. And so um, if you are on this call or if you are going to listen to this call at some point and you want to go gold, there are a couple of things that are deal breakers. Okay. And so I've spent um, a lot of time this last, you know, these last couple of weeks talking to people who are, who are potentially trying to, um, to rank up and um, to go gold even, and I've been there myself. Um, Julie has been through that, Rochelle has been through that, and so I, I know I have a fair amount of um, understanding of what it takes to go gold. And I will say this very comfortably, um, that in order to go gold, you have to have belief. You have to have belief in this company. You have to have belief in these products. You have to have belief in this compensation plan and more than anything else, you can have all of those. Um, but if you don't have belief in yourself, you're probably not going to go gold. That's going to be a struggle. And so, um, you know, we talk a lot about how Plexus is, or network marketing in general, is um, personal development with a compensation plan attached. And, and Plexus is, is no different in that regard. And so you have to have belief in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, then nobody else is going to believe in you. And so where you very well may be, and let me talk really quickly about what you need to go to gold um, in um, practical terms. So for silver, you need to have three qualified ambassadors. For gold, you need to have 20 qualified ambassadors. And so typically we're talking about levels one, two, and three for going gold. And you know, very oftentimes you'll hear um, diamonds and um, the jewels in Plexus say that going gold is the hardest rank that you are going to achieve. And there are a couple of reasons why that's probably very true. Because this is the very beginning stages where you are having to build that belief. We didn't maybe go into this having that belief in ourselves, And so in order to go gold, you have to spend some time building that. And so this is a very intentional process. And so when, when I talk about building belief in the company, um, if you know, okay, I don't understand what this company is about. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know where they're from. I don't know where they're based. I don't know um, what their premise is. Then you need to get very intentional about, about finding the answers to those questions. Um, if you don't understand how these products work, if you don't understand why they work, if you don't know the science and the medical research behind Plexus, um, then you need to be intentional about, about building that belief. And um, if, that's, if you need um, help with that, you can reach out to your sponsor, you can reach out to me, but there are tons and tons and tons of videos that you can watch. If you're a research person like me and you want to read the research, then you can read the research by ingredient. Um, but building your belief is an intentional thing. Um, you, you do it. You, you determine this is something that I need to build, and then you take those steps to build that belief. If you don't believe in yourself, beyond that, let's say you've taken care of belief, um, you know, you've learned about the company, the, the medical efficacy is there, the, the, the product knowledge is there, and you don't believe in yourself, then you really need to spend some time with personal development. And so um, on this team, we can help you in that regard because we will be your biggest cheerleader. We will be your biggest fan. We, um, we come together. We support one another. We, we love each other truly. And so, um, you know, you're never too old and you're never too young. I think I posted the other day about the oldest diamond in Plexus and she started when she was 60, 66 years old. And, um, you know, you're never too old for, for, for redirecting your, your path and a new endeavor. And, um, you know, when you believe in yourself, then, um, you know, kind of everything all comes together. And so um, those are three things that really have to happen in order to go gold. Um, 
And so, let's see. Um, you know, we talk a lot about um, about intensity and momentum on this on on this team. And so, this is something that's going to come. Assuming you have those things in place, you have built your belief, and you know you 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 know that you you know that these products work. You know that um, you are reaching out to people not because you have anything to sell them. Honestly, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more um, in a little bit. But we are not salespeople. We are not. You know, when I, I like wine, I drink, I drink a fair amount of wine. And when I find a really great red wine that costs $8, I'm like, oh my goodness, you have to try this wine. It's delicious. It's so good. And so, you know, when I found this pink drink, I, I, I it was no different. You know, I have friends, I have family and this is my health and wellness journey has ta- has been when I turned 18 years old and I graduated from high school, it was like, light switch for me. I started really, really being intentional about my health and my fitness. And so it's been a 25, how old am I? I don't even know. 25 to 30 year journey. And so when I found Plexus, I wanted to share with people. I've never been a salesperson. I'm a teacher, you know? And so, um, we are not selling anything. We are simply sharing something that we know, you know, I have a friend who has rheumatoid arthritis. I have a friend who has Crohn's. I have a friend who's overweight. I have a friend who is depressed and have, has anxiety. And I know that these products can change their lives, can improve their quality of lives markedly, then I have to tell them about it. And so when I, because I had built my belief and because my belief in these products is unshakable, they're going to feel that from me when I share these products with them, when I talk to them about, about these products. And so that's that intensity um, that comes with with having that you know that that base of belief. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about, about attrition, and everybody that I can see on this call is going to know what I'm talking about. So, okay, you need three ambassadors who are qualified to go silver. You need twenty ambassadors who are qualified to go gold. So let's say each month I'm adding three to five ambassadors. So if I just do the math in about four months, I should be gold. But what happens is that some people quit, right? Some people quit. Some people quit during die off. Some people, um, you know, they didn't lose weight fast enough. And so I want to say this to you and I want you to hear me and understand and know that that attrition is not going to ever go away. That is normal. People quit. It is human nature. People quit. And so you're going to lose people. And so that is why, um, you know, a lot of times you'll hear the diamonds talk about a funnel. So the, it's like a funnel, this business. So you want to be putting more people in than are going to be coming out. You can't do anything about that attrition. It's, it's normal and it's, it's going to always be there, but as long as more is going in than is coming out, you're going to get there. Okay. Some of us are going to get there faster and some of us are going to get there there more slowly, but you have to be okay with that. You cannot let one person who texts you and says, this sucks. I hate it. I want my money back. You cannot let that one call wreck you and take away your belief just because they don't know yet. And so you have to know that it is normal. So we talk a lot about bless and release. Thank you so much for trying the products. And here's something that is so important because third-party validation in this business is huge, right? When somebody buys the newest and greatest TV and then another person hears about it and they buy the newest and greatest TV and then all of a sudden are like, oh, I know like a few people who keep buying this TV. I must be missing something. I got to get this latest and greatest TV. That is third-party validation, and that is what is happening in our community. And so if you leave now, you're really missing the full fruition of that third-party validation. It's coming. And so when somebody leaves you, I want you to be as gracious as you can possibly muster. Teresa and I were just talking about this before the call started. Because they may leave now, but they're probably going to come back unless you close the door. And so if you say, oh, well, it's too bad, so sad, you didn't do it right, sucks for you, they're not coming back to you ever. It doesn't matter how much third-party validation is out there. But if you 
if you are gracious and you say, I'm thank you so much for trying it. I'm so sorry. It didn't work out for you. If you ever want to try it again, if you ever want to come back, I messaged somebody the other day who left me when I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Um, and I messaged her the other day and I said, you have to come back. I have learned so much. I promise you, I can get you through your die off. And she said, let me think about it. So I knew she was out there. I knew she was paying attention because my community is getting, there's an inner portion of my community that's getting saturated. And that's what happens with third party validation. And that's what happens when your plexus business starts to blow up. And so those people who leave us, they're watching the rest of our community who are jumping on board and going, okay, I'm missing something. What did I miss? What did I missed the first time? Maybe I need to come back. If you burn the bridge, you'll lose them forever. And so you want to be as gracious as you can and just let them know that you love them. still. there's no hard feelings and um, you know, they'll probably be back. Um, okay. I want to talk about, um, very oftentimes you'll hear this called the silver hamster wheel. So I talk about Sarah Marble a lot. She was my uh, diamond ambassador who trained us when I went to my very first con convention. And so she is a, uh, reg a retired registered nurse and she um, sat at silver for seven months and she's a diamond in this company. And so the only reason I say this is because we are human beings and it's very, very, very hard to look at somebody who got into the business at the same time as we did and they're ranking up and they're advancing and we're not. And so um, we have to just be aware of that and we have to let our journey be our journey. And we, if we compare ourselves to somebody else, we're really allowing, uh, we're really robbing ourselves of enjoying our journey. And so, um, you know, there are plenty of statistics and if you need them, I will sh share them with you. But um, if you, in network marketing, network marketing, let's just talk about money and forget about um, the health for one minute. 95% um, of people who get into network marketing, and this is Dave Ramsey and all the way down, 95% of who get people who get into network marketing and do not quit will be at the top of this company in 10 years, will be at the top of their company, whatever the company is in 10 years. So let's say it takes 10 years. I mean, what's 10 years? I got 10 years to get at the top of this company. That, that might be my journey. And so where a lot of people get there much more quickly, there are reasons why they get there more quickly and we can talk about that later, but your journey is your journey. And so maybe you need more personal development. Maybe you need more intensity. Maybe you need to build your belief in these products. Maybe you need um, to take a look at your duplication. Are you doing your duplication? And we'll talk about that in a minute. So the journey, if you do not quit, if every day you put one foot in front of the other, we're all gonna get there. We're not gonna get there at the same time. And so we have to be okay with that. If you quit, then you're never going to get there, right? But if you keep putting one foot in front of the other, we're all going to get there. And that's what the data tells us. Um, and, and when I talked about attrition, there are going to be people who just don't get it, who that's human nature. This is hard. So let me quit. Right? So that's human nature. And you're going to have to deal with that. Um, but that that's not us. You know, we're not quitting. Um, you have to be, you have to understand that when people quit the business, it has, everything to do with, with them and nothing to do with you. And so that's a hard one, you know, and I remember like my first couple people who quit, I remember it like it was yesterday. And I remember texting Lisa Hudson, who is my upline and being like, <gasps> so-and-so said it's not for her and she quit. And I was horrified. I mean, it just hurt me so bad because my results were just dynamic and amazing and immediate. And my die off was minimal and I really don't quit anything. And so I just assume that other, everybody else is like me, but they're not, you know? And I remember her saying to me, I was cooking dinner and she's like, well, don't take it, per try not to take it personally. I know it's hard. And I was like, I like let that process through my, through my, you know, gears. And I was like, okay, don't take it personally. Okay. All right. Yeah, cool. I got it. We can't, it has everything to do with them and nothing to do with us. 
unless it has something to do with us. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, um, I don't want to talk about too much about crickets other than to say, just like attrition, crickets are normal. You know, you're going to be talking to somebody, you've told them all about the products, how they can help them personally. Um, they're excited. They tell you, yes, I want to, to check them out, so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden they do like a um, witness protection program. You know, that's normal too. People do that. Like people are, are weird. They, um, you know, they're hesitant, they're reluctant, they're skeptical. We were there, you know, we were all there. So we have to be able to kind of put ourselves in, in their shoes. If you are being intentional and if you have that intensity, then you're going to have your own attrition where, you know, you let those people take the time that they need and that's okay. And that's normal. You let them take that time. They're going to come back. And so you just have to let this, this is a, um, a marathon, not a sprint. And so you have to let them have the time that they need because they'll come back. Um, this is hard. You know, people maybe haven't said that to you yet. Um, but going from going silver is kind of like you're locking arms with your inner circle. They already trust you. Going gold is hard. Uh, going gold means you have to have grit. You have to be intentional about building belief. You have to be okay with people telling you no because people are going to tell you no, and that has to be okay. You have to be okay with, with working. And so, um, if you are, if you want to go gold, um, which is the next, uh, rank, then you have to be okay with being told no. And you have to be okay with working because this is a job. It, it really is. Um, it, you know, silver, we kind of talk about you're covering your products and that's fabulous. And we don't want anybody on our team to cover, to have to pay for their own products. Nobody. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but when you want to go gold, you're being intentional about this business and you have to be okay being told no. Um, we talk a lot, well, maybe we, I talk a lot about the Sarah Robbins um, um, kind of philosophy with, you know, we're waitresses. We found something that is amazing. And so we're going to offer it to everybody. We're just like a waitress who offers coffee. We offer coffee to everybody. Some people want coffee and some people don't. And so you take the emotion out of it. It doesn't have to hurt you that somebody says no. And sometimes you have to say, you have to get 19 no's to get to one yes. And that's the numbers game that we're playing. And you have to be okay with no's. That's okay. I'm not forcing anybody to take Plexus. I am not begging anybody to take Plexus, but I am a waitress and I'm offering it to everybody. And if they told me no, they're probably gonna start paying attention in the future and they're probably gonna come back. Um, going gold means you have to have 20 uh, qualified ambassadors. And a lot of people, and I've heard this on our team, so I'm going to talk, I'm going to mention names, okay? Um, so when I started, I locked arms with um, my besties, uh, and Julie is one of them, and I think she's on here somewhere. And then Julie, there she is, and then Julie uh, very quickly signed up uh, Rochelle, and Rochelle very quickly signed up um Teresa and Stephanie. And so, you know, there are people, there are, you're, you're going to have people who like just get lucky and they get their runners right out of the gate. But that's not, that is not statistically the odds that we're facing. And so you have to be okay with that. You know, um, most people that, that you share plexus with are, as a matter of fact, um, there was a convention like a year or so ago and um, all these diamonds were in the room. And if you don't know, diamonds are the very top level of this company. The average income for a diamond ambassador is $35,000 a month. And so there was all these diamonds in the room. And somebody asked the question, how many of you started, to, uh, started Plexus in order to work this business? How many of you started Plexus for the business opportunity Versus how many of you started Plexus to get your, um, started as, a, as an ambassador to get your products for the cheapest, uh, at the cheapest price. And every room in this, or every hand in the room of these diamonds shot up. And so most 95, 90 to 95% of your 
ambassadors that you sign up are not signing up to go, yes, let me work this business. Like that's a very small percentage. And so, you know, we all signed up to get the best prices on our products. And so what happens is when you find, when you get a person who, um, who keys in and who locks into this um, community and pays attention to this community and hears what it is that we have to offer, which is products that work, that have scientific and medical efficacy with, with, uh, re that are research backed and a compensa compensation plan that is completely unique and exceedingly generous. There's no other company out there like this. It's like, it, it, it's not magic, but it's kind of magical. Um, when people catch that vision, they go, oh, okay, I see this, I get this. And it's not everybody who sees it. And so um, we have to be intentional about plugging people into this community so they get more exposures to what it is we have to offer. We have to get intentional, intentional about um, personal invites to events any single solitary opportunity that you have to get somebody to an event, those are everything. Um, and so, um, you know, you can't let your, I guess my, my whole point in saying this is you can't let yourself, you can't beat yourself off self up because somebody else is going faster because they were, um, they got some runners right out of the gate because most people are not gonna get people who catch that vision immediately. Um, more, people, so more, more often than not, it takes a little bit of time to catch that vision and to be prepared to kind of run with this vision. And so you have to be okay with that. Um, okay, um, so I wanna talk about, this is kind of a little bit different. So when we talk about being intentional and about ranking up, we talk about the power of three a lot. And um, the power of three means if I signed up and I locked arms with my cousin, my aunt, and my best friend, and I said, you have to do this with me, you're gonna love it. I'm gonna draw a picture and hopefully you can see this. Hopefully this will translate. So this is me, okay? And I'm gonna sign up three people and say, I want you to do this with me and we're going to get healthy together and it's going to be amazing. All right. So maybe one of those people are going to also go, Oh, okay. I get it. So I'm going to also share these products with three people and I'm going to lock arms with three people that I know and they're going to try the products too and get these results. And you can see how very, very quickly, just by the power of three and by one or two people, right? I only reached out to three people, but because of the power of three, my organization has grown. And so that's the way that this works. But I want to talk to you tonight very specifically about being much more intentional than we have been about this, okay? And so I'm gonna throw out a few names that most of you have heard. Ashley Kinsel, Brooke Hemingway, um, Emily Roberts, who are very, very, very intentional about the power of three, and even more specifically, um, I don't wanna lose my spot because I'm really careful tonight to bring you everything that I have. So there's a concept that's called tap rooting. And so if you think about um, a tree, okay, most trees have a shallow um, network of roots closer to the surface that kind of anchor it off to the side. And then they have a tap root. And a tap root goes deep until it finds water. And it doesn't matter how, how it will go as deep as it needs to go until it finds that source of water. And so what happens is that um, that taproot is going to securely anchor that tree 
so that, for example, a weeping willow has no taproot. If a severe wind blows through, a weeping willow is going to blow over. But a tree that has that taproot is going to anchor it securely into the ground so that it's not going to blow over. And so when you use that analogy and you apply it to what we're doing, here's how it works. We have maybe a shallow network of people who are, eh, you know, they're hit or miss, you know, with their products, they're not necessarily consistent. They might be telling people about it, but they're not necessarily, you know, intentional about it. They certainly don't have the intensity that we have. The way that tap rooting works is um, you are going to be very, very, very intentional with your levels one through three. And so every level one through, th uh, one through three that you sign up, you are going to say to them, and think about this for a minute, they don't know what they're doing necessarily, unless they've spent, unless they've spent a ton of time researching, but for the most part, they don't know, they don't have the belief that we have in the products, in the um, business plan, uh, in the comp plan, um, in the in Plex's business at all. And so I hate to say this because I'm not that person, but I know a lot of people are like this, where they're just like, I don't know, you, you tell me, right? People, people more often than not want to be told what to do and what the next step is. And so the way that tap working, tap, uh, tap rooting works is you kind of are taking the lead for all of your levels one through three. So I sign um, my friend Betsy up. And so within 48 hours, and this is the very important part, and this is the intentional part, within 48 hours, where Betsy is excited because Betsy has signed up with me. Betsy wants results. Betsy wants to progress. And um, she believes in me because she signed up, right? That's a hard thing to do. Within the first 48 hours, I'm going to say to Betsy, who are three people that you know that can benefit from these products? Who do you know that is autoimmune? Who do you know that um, suffers from migraines? Who do you know that wants to lose weight, that is tired and has no energy and feels terrible? And you're going to um, have Betsy connect you. And so, you know, we've heard these rumblings, but we've not done a great job about it. We've heard these rumblings about three-way chats. Give me those three names. Betsy's gonna put those three people into a three-way chat with me. And I am going to get Betsy her first ambassador. Okay, so Betsy signs up Will. And I'm gonna to say to Will, who are three people that you know. And so I'm helping Betsy build a taproot. And so here's why it's kind of amazing. Because your, that taproot is going to continue until we find water, right? So we're looking for that person that catches that vision for the person who goes, oh, I get it. We're looking for that leader who is wanting to run with us. So we find, let's say we find that leader three levels down, okay? And so now we have Kate who's underneath Will. And Kate is like, this comp, I read the comp plan, it's ridiculous. And oh my gosh, I've been reading about probiotics and prebiotics and this, I, I already feel amazing, okay? So Betsy catches the vision. Betsy becomes a leader, right? And now I have Will and I don't remember who, uh, not what, Betsy, but whoever the two people were that were above her, they have to stay in the game because Betsy is running with this business and the people that are above her, they have to keep their outside leg points in order to get paid, in order to stay in the game. And so tap rooting is a very effective way to keep all of your ambassadors locked in. And so that attrition that we've, we really deal a lot with, by helping them, by, by assuming that they can duplicate when they're brand new and they're just trying to you know, get through die off, by assuming that they can duplicate at that point, we're really, we're missing the boat because they can't. And so it may be a little bit more front loading but it's a way to, it's a, it's a retention strategy and it is a way to have access to, you know, to more people that you would not have otherwise have, have had access to. And so, um, you know, we could talk more about this, but um, 
to me, it feels like, um, at Stephanie, we talked about, did we talk about tap rooting? We talked about it, um, last week or whatever. And, um, in, when I kind of find something that I glom onto, I'm like, okay, let me do this. Let me try this. Let me experiment a little bit. And so I sent it, I sent, um, I, I wrote, I wrote some scripts, which I will share with you guys. Um, both a script to any of my level ones um, and even some of my level twos and I think even a couple level threes who are just sitting back taking the products and I really feel badly that I missed the boat on not doing this for them because they're, they haven't caught a sight, you know, an eye for the vision yet. And so I sent them a script that said, um, you know, well, the first one is me inviting them to think about people that they know that would benefit from these products. And then the second script is a script for them to send their three to seven people who they know would benefit from these products. So I'm not necessarily putting them on blast, but they're, they're in a position to help their friends and family feel better. And I'm doing the heavy lifting because they're going to put them in a three-way chat with me and I'm going to help them get their first ambassador and I'm locking them in because once you have, once they have an ambassador, they're more likely to stay qualified. They're more likely to stay, um, you know, plugged in. And I, I believe that it is a strategy that we can really tap into and that can really help us to make some progress and to grow. Are y'all with me? Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I, I won't talk, I, uh, too much about IPA except for to say a couple of quick things. Uh, we're talking about going gold. And so in order to go gold, you have to be willing to, to hear no's. You have to be willing to um, build your belief. You have to be intentional. You have to be intense. You have to be bold. Um, but you have to also be doing IPA every day. And so here's a, a nice little practical step for those of you who are thinking about going gold or even beyond. Um, so uh, IPA is income producing activity and specifically income producing activity is going to be reaching out to, to new people, following up with, with people who have expressed an interest in the past, um, or people who are customers. When we talk about retention and attrition, you have to be following up with your customers. They're going to quit if you don't follow up with them during die off. They're going to quit if you don't follow up with them, um, you know, at some point because they're alone, right? They have to get plugged in. They have to get plugged into our community. They have to feel supported and congratulated for their victories, you know? So we have to be very intentional about, about follow-up. Um, but one of the IPA strategies for going gold is reaching out to new people. So you can actually go onto Google. You can print out a blank calendar. Um, I'm going to look at the time real quick. Um, and so if you're, if you're new ish, um, or even if you're not printing out a blank calendar and filling it each day of the month with two names, um, take your Frank's list, take your, um, your, your updated Frank's list, take your, um, your chicken list, whatever it is, whatever you have, whatever point you are at and fill in that calendar with two names per, per day. At the end of the month, you will have reached out to 60 people. If you're new and you, let's say you're just getting ready to go silver or you're going silver this month or you just went silver, if you put four names in there, you will have reached out to 120 names at the end of the month. And so um, that is a very practical, very, uh, you know, kind of um, tangible Thing that you can do to make sure that you are reaching out to people. If you're going to go gold, like I said, you have to be able to hear no's. You have to hear a lot of no's. And so um, you have to be reaching out to people to get through those no's to find the yeses that you need. Um, I want to talk about posts. So um, if you are wanting to go gold, you have to be posting every day. And so, you know, um, a lot of I hear a lot of people saying, well, I'm not ranking up and I, I want to rank up. And so you have to take a hard look. You know, we want you to rank up, but 
at the end of the day, and I do this when I'm not ranking up, when my team's not ranking up, when we're just kind of saying, I, I look at, well, what can I do differently? What do I have to change up? You know, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And so you can only look at what you're doing and what you can do differently, okay? So if you wanna rank up, you have to look at what you're doing and what you can do differently. And so um, posting is, is, is really big, it's important. You should be posting, um, you know, on Facebook at least two times a day. And you know, the algorithms have changed and there's a lot of chatter about the algorithms and do they apply to public? Do they apply to private? What, whatever the consensus is, you have to be posting. And you need to be posting every day. And so you need to be posting about Plexus, but you need to also be posting about your, um, your private, your, your, your life. Because if you're only posting about Plexus, and that is hard for all of us, because I think I've talked to all of you about this before, it's harder to find something to post about my private life than it is for Plexus. I could find, I could post about Plexus all day long. And so incorporating my private life is, is a challenge. And so that's the, that may be the challenge because if you're only posting about Plexus, then people feel like you're selling them something. And so we have to take, um, you know, take an opportunity to just kind of scroll back through our personal Facebook and see, okay, how many, uh, the IPA challenge that we just did, um, for, for February, you know, had us take an inventory of our, our personal Facebook page and how many posts for Plexus, how many posts for personal. And it really should be, and I'm, I'm not perfect because I, I think I tr I'm, I'm pretty good at 50-50, but it really should be more 60-40 is what the consensus says. And so that's hard. So we have to be willing to take a hard look at that. Um, blurry posts. I mean, we're not perfect, you know, we're not network or we're not, marketing professionals per se, but if this is our job, then we should be getting better. And so if you have a picture and it's blurry, don't post it. Take a new one, take it 20 times. This is your job, right? Take it 20 times until you get a clear image. There, we, we shouldn't be posting blurry images. Um, another thing that I see quite a bit is the image with the black chunks on the top and the bottom. And that is, that's a, you know, um, as easy as just saving the image and then editing it down so that you crop out that black. But we want to be adding value to people's page. And so it should be visually appealing. That's what adds value. If it's something that's appealing to look at, that is an, that's a value that we're adding to them. And so your picture should be crystal clear as best as you can. I know that's hard. Um, you know, they should not be, um, you know, have the, the black chunks at the top and the bottom to the best of your ability. You know, we want to have images that draw the eye. That's an attraction marketing that, you know, you hear the diamonds talk so much about. Um, and less graphics if we can. And I know that's hard. I know it's hard. And I, geez, oh, Pete's like I did it. I, that was all I knew, you know. And so we all kind of, I think, start there with the graphics. But if we can at some point start moving away from the graphics, that's what takes us to the next level because we're not, this is not a commercial. We're not a commercial. We're not, we don't want people to think that we're salespeople. We want people to think that we're, that we use Plexus and we love Plexus and this is how it has made my life better. And so, you know, there's, there's an application for, um, for those graphics, you know, when we're like, okay, let me show you what, gra what what gut health looks like. There's an application for those, but if everything that we post is a graphic, then we're just really too commercially. We have to just be careful about that. Um, I think I did say everything that I wanted to make sure that I said. Um, you have to be okay with doing things when you're scared. So, you know, sometimes you can just kind of go, okay, there's one thing that I haven't done, but I know I should do because it's scary. You should be doing it. Whatever that thing is, if it's going live, if it's going live on your page, if it's creating a team page, whatever that thing that scares you, you have to 
do it right. And I, gosh, I tell myself this and I live by this. So I know I can say it to you guys. Um, but, um, being brave means doing things that you're scared to do, but you know, you're doing it anyway. And so, um, I hate to be a cliche, but nothing amazing happens in your comfort zone. And so we have to be okay pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone. That's going to, to grow us and make us bigger and make us better. And so, um, you have to be okay with, with doing that. You know, I remember Brandy saying, you know, about a year ago, what's the worst that's going to happen if you go live? Nobody's going to watch it. And I was like, all right. And I, I know the first couple of lives that I did, I was like, Julie will tell you, I called her. I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I do? It's terrible. Help me go look at it right now. It's so bad, you know, but you have to go through those to get better. You have to do them in order to get better. And I watch a lot of Bob um, Heilig on um, YouTube and he's just a network marketing guru. And he talks about, about the live videos and how much it draws your audience in. And so, I mean, it's hard for me too. It's hard. Those are hard, but whatever that is, whatever that thing is that scares you, you know, you have to be okay doing it. Um, I think I got through it. I think I got through everything that I want to talk about. Um, you have to be okay with just your journey. And if your journey takes 10 years, then your journey takes 10 years. And so comparison is the thief of joy. So we have to, it's hard for all of us, but we have to, to be okay with our journey and just look at yourself. What can I do differently? What do I need to do tomorrow that I haven't been doing yet? And I'll say one more thing. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this or not. Lindsay Russell, who is one of the diamonds on Jewel Heist, she posted an article today and I posted it on Kelth Bells because it is freaking amazing. And it's called, um, it's called, um, did anybody see it? And you can chime in. It's about um, little, small, teeny, tiny things that you don't notice and leave such an, a um, subtle, subtlety behind that you don't notice them as the days go by. Cal? Yes. Was it the compound effect? Yes, thank you. Okay. And not until years go by do you reap the re rewards of the compound effect, but it's just oh, a little I'm teeny tiny. You. It's little teeny tiny things that you decide, I'm going to do this every day. I'm going to reach out to two people every day. I'm going to take my Plexus products every day. It doesn't matter if it's um, a, a health journey or a professional goal. It's little teeny tiny things that over time make huge impacts, but you can't see them on a day-to-day -day basis. And so find out what those are. Read that article. I posted it on Kel's Bells and it's also on Jewel, Jewel Heist. Um, but decide what those things are going to be. And they should be deal breakers. No matter what, you girls are really heckling me tonight. And I'm going to spank you later for it. Uh, so, so ultimately, they are going to pay it off in, in huge dividends. And um, there's, if you, when you read it, they actually did an experiment with, uh, with a couple of gentlemen who um, decided, well, one guy was going to eat 125 calories less per day. And so like a year went by and he's like, okay, whatever. 15 years went by and I'm paraphrasing at this point, 15 years went by and he was trim and fit and healthy and his buddy was not, you know, it's the compound effect. It's little things that you do every day. And it is, it's a set in stone. You're not wavering on this. It's happening. And over time, you're going to have the compound effect. So my challenge, my, my point, my ultimate point was this could be your compound effect effect. What is the little thing you can do every day? I'm going to do something brave every day. I'm going to reach out to two people every day. I'm going to post, post on Facebook every day. In 10 years, you have your compound effect. Right? Okay. Do we have anything? Hi, Vicki. How are you? It's nice to see you. Hey, Cal, I put one thing in the chat part. 
just at the beginning when I when you were talking about what it go ahead and go ahead and share it. Um, it's on there. I mean, I wrote it down. Oh, you want um, me to read it? What does it mean when it says you have to have 15 points outside your first leg? I'm guessing you can't just have 20 ambassadors with outside leg. Are you saying for going gold? Yeah. So this is this is that um, what I was alluding to when I was talking about a tap root. Okay, so if I have a let's say let's say um, I didn't add any level ones. I added Julie. Okay. And then Julie added Rochelle, and then Rochelle added Teresa and Stephanie and uh, Sharon and Alexis, and I never added another ambassador. I would not be able to promote, and Julie would be able to pass me because I don't have an outside leg. So the way that this works is it's fine to have a main leg, but I have to also have an outside leg, which maintains, so you're referring to gold, so I, I have to have, maybe I would have um, uh, 85 points in my main leg, 15 of my 100 points have to come from my outside leg. So I would have to do some work too. Julie can't take me to goal. I have to do some work too. And so what is the outside leg? Is it, it's the people under your people? So when you, yep, yeah. So when you, let's say you have, a, let's say you have a runner, uh, Julie. Okay, you have a runner, Julie. Um, and Julie builds this huge business and she's the only runner you have. You're going to have to keep adding level ones until you add a runner so that you get somebody else. This is going to be your outside leg who is running too. So the majority of your points can come from your main leg, but you still have to have points from your outside leg. So here's an example. When you go diamond, okay, when you go diamond, you're, you still have to have in your outside leg you have to have 3,500 um, points. You have to have 1,500 points from your outside leg. So that's emerald on your outside leg. So you can't, the way, what happens is, let's say you get one runner who is just killing this business and they have got it, and you mm -hmm. never add another level one, you can't go all the way to diamond without having an outside leg. You have to be, you have to be working too. And that's what it does. It just keeps you working too. Well, I feel like when you say we have to be working too, like that to me sounds like my level, like adding level ones. That's me working. Yep, it is. It will cover it. No, my people working, but yes. I, my, you know what I mean? Like, yep. Cause yeah. Cause you had said that you, it takes 20, I know it's a hundred points or, you know, 20 times five, but you can't do it unless you have somebody else who's giving you 15 points. Right. So right. which means you have to constantly, you have, which means you're going to constantly be having to add level ones, or you're gonna have somebody on your outside leg who also becomes a runner. So like right now, you know, like, um, you may have, going to go gold, you may have one person who was a runner and who added 85 of your points, but because you have three other level ones who are qualified, you're going to go gold, even though they're not runners. They're outside your main leg. They don't have to be a runner. The points just have to come from outside your main leg. All of your points can't come from your main leg. And that's just your strongest, your, your main runner, where most of your points come from. Uh, today, I read a statistic that most diamonds, and this will probably blow your mind. Um, I'm going to stop the recording.